Good afternoon and welcome to Trojan Field for today's high school baseball game between the Cathedral Fighting Irish and the Center Grove Trojans. Hello everyone, Kevin Conrad along with Rick Embry. We welcome everyone to our coverage of Center Grove Baseball presented by Home Bank. Once again, another great night for baseball, 72 degrees, a little bit on the windy side. And welcome back to my partner, Rick Embry, back from watching the Boilermakers in the Final Four in Championship. And Rick, welcome back. I know you had a great trip. Yeah, it was awesome, Kevin. Awesome to... Spent some time with my sons, and uh, something that hasn't been done in 44 years of Purdue athletics. So I figured I better, I better take advantage of that because in another 44 years, as much as I'd like to be sitting here with you, Kevin, I That's don't right. know if uh, I don't know if we'll be around. So uh, it was a great time, but uh, Trojans continued rolling even in my absence. They, they had a good victory last night down at a, a good Bedford North Lawrence team came from behind to win that one so perfect on the year again kevin 11 and 0 same thing they were last year going into this cathedral game and cathedral broke that 11 game winning streak for center grove last year this year a little bit different team for cathedral they come in four and five struggling a little bit mostly hitting the ball but uh as we know with that cathedral tradition they play a great schedule uh and it's a baseball powerhouse so you better be ready to play tonight Kobe Cherry gets the start on the mound tonight for the Trojans. Leading off for Cathedral, center fielder number seven, Patrick Major. Kobe is sophomore. He's having an excellent season on the mound for the Trojans. And leading things off for the Irish will be Patrick Mazur, senior playing in center field. And the first pitch in there called strike one. Now Cherry comes in on the year, Kevin, 3-0, and a 2.80 ERA, 15 innings pitched only allowed five hits in those 15 innings, Kevin. Seven runs, six of them earned, 12 walks, 25 strikeouts. So if there's one thing that you really got to keep an eye on for Kobe, it's the walks. If he can minimize those, he's very difficult to hit. Fouls this one away. One ball, two strikes. Cherry getting ahead early in the counts. Center Grove last night on the road. Nice win, 6-4 at BNL. This one goes to center field. Drake McClure going back, and he'll make the catch one away. Yeah, Mazur came in batting 4-12 on the year. Kevin, their leading hitter by over 100 points. So good to get the leadoff man out, especially in Mazur and the, the hot bat that he swung so far this year. Trojans again last night, down 4-1 to one to BNL. Rally to beat the Stars, 6-4. Good win for Coach Hatfield and the Trojans. Strike one here to the number two batter, Bo Cooper, DH. He's a junior. Outside, one ball, one strike behind the plate tonight for the Trojans. Sophomore Tristan Yurman. Third base, Carson Bush, junior. Noah Coy, senior at shortstop. Gannon Grant, sophomore at second base. Kate Jones gets a start at first base. He's a junior. This one's off the plate outside, pops the mitt, two balls, one strike. Andrew Krupa, junior in left field. 
Drake McClurg, freshman center field, and A.J. Beck, senior in right field. Hard ground ball, Coy backhands it, good arm, two away. And good to see that Cherry, you know, even though he comes in 25 strikeouts and 15 innings on the season, he, he gets the first couple guys out, and that's where you limit your pitch count, Kevin. If you can, you know, not, not go into 3-2 counts or, or – two and two and they foul off a couple you put the ball in play let this defense work for you that's what cherry's done first two batters swing and a miss by the number three batter this is jt steiner behind the plate senior but two gone outside low one and one the count steiner the only home run for cathedral this year he comes in batting 259 senior catcher Fouls this one away. Yeah, this Cathedral team, Kevin, like I talked about, nine games. They've only scored 43 runs in those nine games, so just averaging uh, almost five runs a game and giving up 33 runs in those nine games. Fastball's outside, two and two to count. Played on Monday night, lost at Lawrence North five to three. Ground ball up the middle, gets past Cherry. Coy on the run, makes the play. That's a nice play, Kevin, and you know why he's able to throw Steiner out. Catcher speed right there. <laughs> well, I think we need it. They're going to do a review. <laughs> I think you might have been safe. Oh, glad to be back, Kevin. <laughs> we played a half. Cherry off to a great start. Center Grove coming to the plate. Cathedral in town tonight. Tonight's game being presented by Home Bank. went to Center Grove High School, proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ridley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not going to find anybody more local than us. Trojans coming to the plate for the first time tonight here against the Irish. Toby Cherry, very efficient. Top half of the first, three up, three down, and some great defense behind Cherry with Noah Coy at shortstop making two very nice plays. And Noah will lead things off for the Trojans here in the bottom of one. Strike one to Noah. There's strike two, outer part of the plate. A couple of tough pitches. Yeah, two nice pitches by Jackson Reeves, the senior. We'll give his stats after this pitch, but this one's high. One and two. Reeves comes in one and one on the season. Two point six nine ERA. Thirteen innings pitched. He's given up fourteen hits, eight runs, five of those earned, eight walks, and sixteen Ks. Down the left field line. It's a fair ball. Coy, great speed going around first base. Stand up double for Noah Coy. I was here early watching BP today and. He was doing just that right there. He was working on going opposite field, and right off the bat, he goes with a double. Well, that's just a great piece of hitting because obviously Reeves, the game plan, just 
uh, pound Coy on the outside part of the plate. He does it on the first two called strikes, and then once Noah gets two strikes, does a great job. A good pitch on the outside part of the plate by Reeves, and Noah just takes it the other way, and he gets a leadoff double, his fifth double of the year, and Center Grove in business here in the bottom of the first. Gannon Grant, sophomore, playing at Sega Base. Squares the bunt, pulls it back, strike one. Yeah, you see Grant square around a little bit and then pulled it back. Center Grove played a little bit of that small ball last night. Kevin to get back in the ball game. Only had five hits, but they scored six runs down at BNL. Bunt Beautiful. to the first baseman. His only play is to first. Does a great job to advance Noah Coy to third base. That's just a great piece of bunting there by Gannon. And, you know, as a two-hole hitter, especially you got a dynamic leadoff man like third Coy, that's what you're asked six, to do person, sometimes. And push. Gannon does that perfectly there. And now Center Grove runner in third base in less than two outs. Now you got to get him in. Carson Bush, Jr. playing at third base. <laughs> Curveball hits the outside corner. Strike one. Bush comes in batting a sizzling 606, Kevin, from the junior. Five doubles, 12 RBIs on the season. He's been on a tear the entire year. Count evens up at one ball, one strike to Carson Bush. Little by little, he's worked his way up in the lineup. Batting third now for the Trojans. First year varsity player. Outside corner. Man, that's, that's off the plate. I mean, I know he hits the mitt there from the catcher, but he's sitting. He was sitting a good six inches outside. I'd go out there again. This one's high. Two balls, two strikes. One of those things, and you would know better than – than me, Kevin, as a catcher, you, you sit out there, and if you're going to get the calls, you, you continue to move out there a little further and see how much leeway you're going to have from the home plate umpire. The 2-2 off-speed pitch, hammers it right out the middle, RBI single, the Center Grove Trojans strike first. Just a great bit of piece of hitting there by Carson Bush. He gets a breaking ball that gets a little bit too much of the plate, and he just takes it straight up the middle, past Reeves and into center field, and Carson Bush with his 13th RBI of the year and he goes into the leading position in RBIs for Center Grove and Center Grove takes the lead here in the bottom of the first. A.J. Beggs, number four batter, senior playing in right field. Bush could lead at first base, good cut by Beggs. That was a good cut by A.J. He comes in batting 355, one of the three home runs for Center Grove on the year, 10 RBIs. 11 runs scored from the senior right fielder. Checks Bush back to first. He's in there safely. The Trojans already a couple of hits. Double by Coy, single by Bush. One run in. Go on, Begsy. Jackson Reeves, senior pitcher from the stretch. Fouled off by Beggs. Falls behind no balls, two strikes. Yeah, two good cuts there from Beggs, but now he's in a no ball, two strike hole. On, Bush Cover. with only one stolen base on the year there at first base. Fouled away. Protecting. Reeves has had four appearances on the year, 13 innings pitched, so averaging a little over three innings pitched. You'll start to see, Kevin, as the season goes along, obviously, some of these guys will start to increase their innings pitched, and when it's cold and windy and everything else in, in May, or ugh, March, sometimes you kind of ease them into the season wisely. One ball, two strikes to Beggs. Ground ball, right side. Oh. Diving play by the second baseman as he tried to get out of the mitt. He lost control of it. I would give that an inside yeah, field single. I agree, infield base hit there. Great diving, diving attempt by the second baseman, Max Finn, the sophomore. Sorry, the senior. But then you're right, he couldn't get it out of the mitt and get it over there. So Beggs with an infield single. Center Grove now two on and still only one out for Yerman. 
Yerman sophomore. Ball one. Yerman 355 on the season coming in. One triple, two doubles, 11 RBIs for Tristan. Goes the opposite way into right center field. The right fielder cuts it off. Single for Yerman. Run scores. Gets an RBI. 2-0 Trojans. Beggs goes to third base. Carson Bush scores. Great job of hitting again by Yerman. He hits it in the right center field. Only thing he did wrong there, Kevin, was he rounded first base and the first baseman actually threw behind him. I think he was kind of throwing at the cutoff man, but you got to take that extra base there. But a great job of hitting. Another RBI for Yerman, his 12th of the year. Bush scores. Beggs goes first to third in Center Grove with two runs here already in the bottom of the first. This is Easton Smith, Junior DH. Here comes the throw home. He's safe. A.J. Beggs running on contact from third base to home. He is safe. And, and that's the only way he scores, Kevin, is if he takes off as soon as that ball's hit. That's exactly what he did. And the third baseman, Chase Nichols, threw it a little bit high. If that ball's down a little bit, that gives Steiner enough time to, to tag – Beggs out at home plate, but the ball was high, and Beggs was able to slide under there. And Center Grove, big, big inning here now in the bottom of the first inning. Four hits for the Trojans, three runs in. Runners at first and second, one away, and the batter is Caden Jones, number seven batter. Outside ball one, and defensively tonight for the Irish, behind the plate, J.T. Steiner, senior. At third base, Chase Nichols, sophomore. Eli Sensiball, sophomore at shortstop. Max Finn, senior at second base. Eli Bennett, junior at first base. Fakes the pickoff attempt to second base. In left field, Landon Hughes, sophomore. Patrick Mazur, senior in center. And in right, Xander Carnahan, junior. Patrick Smith dancing on second base there. He has two steals on the year. He is the courtesy runner for Yerman. The catcher, good cut by Jones. He definitely has home run power. You saw one last Saturday in one of those county games, Kevin Caden got into one. One homer, eight RBIs, 389 for the junior first baseman. Put into the trees out there in right field. One ball, one strike. Takes another good cut, one and two. Reeves, same, same thing that he did with Noah Coy there, just peppering the outside part of that plate. Jones has got to shorten up now with two strikes and just try to poke that ball into left field just like Noah did. Goes with it to the shortstop. They'll try to turn two. They get the one at second and first base double play. Well done by the shortstop. Eli sends a ball to Max Finn, to Eli Bennett at first base, but a great start for the Senegro Trojans. Four hits, three runs across. Trojans lead at 3-0 over the Cathedral Fighting Irish. This is CG Baseball being presented tonight by Home Bank. I've been Greenwood my entire life. Um, born and bred, went to Center Grove High School. Proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home. It's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ribley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 365 times, shame on the weatherman. Stop trusting the weatherman and start trusting your instincts.
What a great start here in the top of two. Carson Bush at third base. Catches the line drive from Xander. Carnahan, one away. Defense has been great behind uh, Kobe Cherry tonight. Yeah, you're exactly right, Kevin. And all four balls put in play so far by Cathedral, but defense has been up to the task so far. Ball one to the number five batter. This is Eli Bennett, junior first baseman. But you also got to look at that as, man, when I was an infielder or outfielder, when my pitcher was throwing strikes and pounding that zone, it was so much easier to, to work behind a guy like that that's working quick and throwing strikes versus somebody that might be a little bit wild. You're ready to play at all times instead of kind of losing focus sometimes. Three balls, no strikes to Bennett. Four pitches. He is aboard with a walk. So with one away, Landon Hughes, sophomore left fielder, steps up for the Irish. Hughes, the number six batter for Cathedral. First base runner tonight for the Irish. Off-speed pitch, ball one. A little bit of a wild streak here for Kobe after getting those first four guys out. Five straight balls for him. Outside, two balls, no strikes. We've seen that from Kobe a little yep. bit this year where he's absolutely like a machine, throwing a lot of strikes, and then all of a sudden he just kind of Kind of just misses the strike zone. Yeah, we saw that down at IU in that first game of the year against uh, Centerville, Ohio. He absolutely breezed through the first, I think, 11 batters, uh, three and two-thirds, and then this brilliant commentator made a comment about no walks or anything like that, and he proceeded, I think, to walk the next three guys. From the stretch, 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss by Landon Hughes. You know, that's not very – also, when somebody's thrown six straight balls, I'm going to wait and make him throw me a strike before I swing at one. Hughes comes in batting 300 on the season, two doubles. Fouls this one away. That might hit their bus over there. Yeah, a little bit shy, about 150 feet shy. <laughs> Depth perception, not the greatest up here. Now, now, if Grant Embry was parking over there <laughs> yeah, a year or two been, ago, yeah, I it would have hit his car. Diving over there. After Dad over here told him not to park over yes. there. The 2-2. Two -two. Yes, let's see. Could be two. Coy's going to go on to first. Ah. And the throw's a little bit errant. Pulls Jones off the base at first base. So, I guess you're going to say E6. Yeah, and, and he just got kind of caught in no man's land there. You're right. It wasn't hit hard enough. It was going to be a bang-bang play at second base. Number 12, Chase Nichols. And so Noah kind of hesitated, and by that time he kind of lost his rhythm a little bit, and that throw pulls Jones off at first base. So now Cathedral with an opportunity here in the top of the second to get a couple runs back after Center Grove put a three spot on the board in the bottom of the first. Chase Nichols, sophomore, playing at third base. Runners at first and second, one away. We're in the top of two. Kobe trying to work out of a jam. He's high with the pitch. Nichols batting 250 on the year. Like I said, not a lot of big batting averages for this Cathedral team with the exception of Mazur at the top of the lineup. Hit well, center field. Going back is Drake McClurg. A lot of room, makes the catch. The runner at second will tag and advance to third base. The runners at first and third with two gone. Great job by McClurg. He's got great speed, read it well. Yeah, and that, that wind is pretty tricky out there tonight, Kevin. Kind of blowing to the right field like it has for most of the year here at Center Grove. But kind of a swirling wind out there. But Nichols put a sting on that one just right at McClurg. And now Cherry one out away from working out of this second inning jam. Number eight batter Max Finn, senior playing at second base. Chance here to get the Irish on the board. Breaking ball, strike one. And Finn comes in batting 208 on the year, five RBIs. Cherry starts him out with a breaking ball for a called strike. Outside, did he go? 
The runner's coming. The throw to Cherry goes off his glove. The run scores. Wild pitch. Allows the runner to score from third. That's Bennett. Yeah, that's a good job of running by Bennett. He knows all he has to do is beat Cherry into the plate. Kobe kind of hesitated a little bit instead of charging in to cover the plate. Yerman got to the ball, but Cherry wasn't at the at the plate, and Cathedral gets a cheap run there on the wild pitch. Landon Hughes is at second base. One ball, one strike, your count. To Finn at the plate from the stretch. High with the fastball, two and one the count. Cathedral gets a run here, Kevin, in the top of the second without the benefit of a hit. A walk, an error. Fly ball moves him over and then scores on a wild pitch. Pops him up in the infield. Carson Bush calls it out, and he makes the catch. Well done by Carson Bush. Not an easy play to make by any means. Irish, they get a run. 3-1, to one. Trojans lead it here on the home field against Cathedral. Tonight's game being presented by Home Bank. This is Center Grove Trojan Baseball. care we're about you the patient we have invested in the latest technology in order to make the eye exam as thorough and hassle-free as possible our high-tech equipment assists us in diagnosing issues before they cause significant vision loss we also offer the latest in lens technology and our assortment of frames appeals to every style and budget let us help get you on a path to better vision today call our office at 317-883-0071 Trojans three runs in the first. Response from Cathedral. They get a run in the top of two. Now the Trojans here in the bottom of two. Leading things off will be Andrew Krupa playing in left field. He's a junior. Takes a good cut. Jackson Reeves throwing tonight for the Irish. He's a senior. Quick worker out on that mound, Kevin. Grounder up the middle, Krupa with the single. Hit number five for the Trojans. Yeah, the second time, Center Grove's just done a really good job of just taking the ball right up the middle against Reeves. First it was Bush for an RBI single. Now Krupa on. Ball State commit at first base now and got really good speed. We'll see if Coach Hatfield puts him in motion with Drake McClurg up at the plate. McClurg posting some great numbers. Freshman, delayed steal. Krupa head first slide is thrown out. Kind of got caught up in no yeah. man's land. Couldn't get back to first, so he just made that choice. I got to go to second base, and he's thrown out one away. Yeah, he knows it wasn't really a delayed steal. He just got too far out there, Kevin. And when McClurg pulled the bat back, as he should when it was a ball, Krupa was out too far off of first base, and now... Ground ball to the Sega baseman. Max Finn throws out McClurg, two gone. And that just completely changes the complexion of that inning, Kevin. When you get a leadoff man on, you're looking to kind of bunt him over before the top of the order in Noah Coy, and instead you get a caught stealing and then a, a ground ball to second base, and now you got nobody on and two outs for Coy. Noah Coy doubled and scored back in the first. Strike one to Noah. Went with the pitch right down the left field line for a double. Stand-up double. Noah came in batting 469 on the season, Kevin. 
Two triples, five doubles. He tacked on another double in the first inning. For the second inning in a row, though, Reeves has him down in a no-ball, two-strike hole. That one's high and outside, one and two. Noah got behind in the count back in the first and took a pitch outside corner right down the line. Left fielder really shallow over there now, too. Outside once again, two balls, two strikes. Center Grove 11 and 0 on the season, 7 and 0 here on the home field. Cathedral at 4 and 5, 3 and 4 on the road. That one just missed. Full count. Yeah, Steiner did a good job of trying to pull that. He, he's in fact telling the Cathedral coaching staff that was outside as they were chirping a little bit from that dugout. And he's high with the pitch. Coy is aboard with a walk. That's just once again. I mean, there, there's no better leadoff man in the state of Indiana than Noah Coy. He falls behind, no balls, two strikes. Reeves throws a couple borderline pitches. Noah's able to hold off on those, and he's on base for the second time in two innings. Checks Noah back to first. He dives in safely. Again, Grant at the plate. Had the sack bunt back in the first. Moving Coy from second to third back in the first. Once again, checking Coy back to first. Looks like Coy might have been leaning a little bit that time. Coy on the year, three steals so far and three attempts. Decent lead. Yeah, Reeves is definitely. Concerned? Yes. <laughs> I get so used to now in the major leagues now, Kevin, you can't throw over <laughs> unlimited amount of time. He's going, yeah. Ah. Lifts it up into left field. Left fielder camping under it. Uh-oh. Wind, uh -oh. wind just blew it. Wow. It's going to drop in. He'll end up at second base, and Coy scores. The wind just took it. Uh, you could tell he was in trouble, Kevin. He was kind of, as they used to say back in the day, circling the wagons there, and that's going to be a double. RBI. For Gannon Grant, but that, that's – Wisely, Noah kept running. Obviously, with two outs, he's running on the pitch anyway. And, uh, yeah, left fielder there. Struggling to gauge that wind. And then at the last minute, I mean, he was a good seven or eight feet away from it. And he looked at the center fielder. That's Landon Hughes, sophomore, in left. Observation and writing up the, right out the lineup tonight. Cathedral, entire left side, sophomores, Hughes in left. Sophomore Nichols at third base, sophomore, and since the ball at shortstop, also a sophomore. Ball one to Carson Bush. Center Grove leads at four to one, five hits. Yeah, that's they call that major league pop ups there. Obviously, in the outfield, so not really a pop up, but Grant really skied that ball, and you know, with the wind blowing the way it is, it was going to be an adventure out there. Outside. So, Center Grove was able to get that run back, Kevin, that they gave up in the top of the second. Two balls, no strikes. Bush, RBI, single back in the first, also scored. <laughs> Low and outside, 3-0 the count. Good, good eye there by... Carson as well. I would say probably one of the best home crowds we've seen this season here for CG. Of course, what? early on, you got everybody on spring break for a couple of weeks, now everybody back to school and good weather. Yep, that's the that's the key part. Kevin is temperatures in the mid to low 70s today. A little windy, but still beautiful weather for baseball. And you're right, big crowd out here tonight for Center Grove, and the fact that you got an 11-0 team kind of helps as well. Bush is aboard with a walk. First walk issued tonight by Reeves. Number four batter A.J. Beck singled and scored back in the first. Ball one to A.J. Center Grove this week, again, number one in the coaches poll, 4A, and now they've moved up to number one in PBR Indiana, 4A poll. They've overtaken uh, Carmel in the PBR, 4A poll. This one's low. Two balls, no strikes. Really got a challenging upcoming schedule, Kevin. You got uh, 
at Roncalli on Friday. They're 6-2. and two. Castle comes here from Southern Indiana. They played them last year in the semi-state. They're 8-2 and two and ranked 7th or 8th. And then uh, Monday night you have Westfield. So a really – and then you have New Albany right after Westfield next week. So a really challenging – upcoming games for Center Grove where you can really get, start to gauge yourself as the season ticks into late April. Two and one the count to Beggs. Kind of an excuse me type swing there. Does foul it off. Two and two the count. Reset here. Reset. Let's go. All right. Yeah, that's sometimes as a batter, Kevin, you're like, man, this should be three balls and one strike and I'm sitting in a great hitter's count and instead that one I can't. I didn't get the bat out of the way, so now it's two-two. We'll see what Beggs can do. Beggs takes time. Yeah, we was paying a lot of attention to Cannon Grant back there at second base. This one comes across high, full count. So full count, two gone. Runners will be in motion here on this pitch. Yeah, so anything in the gap now, Carson Bush is probably going to be able to get all the way in. Big pitch here for both teams. There go the runners, ground ball, oh. right through the wickets of the shortstop. E6, run scores, 5-1 Trojans. It was almost like Kevin, and I think that was a sense of ball at shortstop. He was trying to decide if he was going to have enough time to get the, the force out at second base, but with Bush going in motion, I think that's what he kind of hesitated there. And by the time he looked up a little bit, and that ball goes right through the wickets in center grove with an unearned run, another one. So Gannon Grant scores from second base. Carson Bush moves on to second base. Begs at first. And now Tristan Yerman fouls off the first pitch. Yerman singled an RBI back in the first. And he talked a little bit, Kevin, about that, that young left side of that cathedral fielding. And you get the air from the sophomore at shortstop and then that fly ball in left field that that uh, sophomore couldn't. Hit by the pitch. Yerman at first base. Base is loaded. Yearman, third time on the year that he's been hit by a pitch. He's now tied for the lead with A.J. Beggs. Patrick Smith will be the courtesy runner for the catcher. Yearman at first base, and the pitching coach will make a visit out to the mound. So the head coach for Cathedral is Ed Frege. 1999 Cathedral grad, won a couple of state titles when he was a player, one as a football player and the other as a basketball player and won a state title as the head coach of the, the Irish in 2017. Also a couple of runner-ups as the baseball head coach for Cathedral. Yeah, sectional champs, six out of the last seven years, Kevin. And the last three in a row, they've got 26 in school history, 15 regional titles, eight semi-state titles, three state championships, and they lead the state with six runner-up finishes. Obviously a a great baseball tradition. This is a big opportunity for Center Grove to break this game wide open, Kevin. If he, Smith can find a way to get one in the gap and watch these guys run, Center Grove can put up another crooked number here in the bottom of the second. Easton Smith. Get into a fielder's choice back in the first. Looks at the first one high. Great opportunity here for the junior DH with bases loaded. Number six batter. Easton batting 409 on the year. Nine RBIs. Stays off of that one. Two balls, no strikes. Gets a chance to add to that total. No activity at the moment for the uh, Cathedral Fighting Irish in the bullpen. High and tight, 3-0, and nowhere to put him. Yeah, and 
this is all came with two outs, Kevin. Yep. Taken on 3-0. There's a fastball down the middle of the plate. Three and one. Looking for a pitch you can drive somewhere if you're Easton Smith. And don't get it. RBI walk. That's right. He's aboard with a walk. RBI for Easton Smith. Carson Bush will score to make it 6-1 to one Trojans. Number 23, Caden Jones. Caden Jones at the plate. Hit into a double play back in the first. A couple of walks issued by Reeves. Both of them occurring here in the second. Off-speed pitch. Takes a big cut. Ninth guy to bat in this inning, Kevin. And like I said, after Krupa got caught stealing and then McClure grounded out, the last six guys have reached base. Lifts this one up into left field. Left fielder coming in, shortstop going back, and it's going to be the shortstop making the catch. That's Eli Sansibal. And that's just not an easy play on a day like today with that win. Playing havoc with the outfielders and infielders. Trojans, three more runs across here in the bottom of two. They lead it 6-1 over Cathedral here at Trojan Field. Tonight's game presented by Home Bank. Cathedral, 6-1, to one. Trojans five hits, one ball, two strikes to the number nine batter, Eli Sensiball, sophomore, playing at shortstop, and takes a cut, and he strikes out one away here in the top of three. First punch out tonight for Kobe Cherry. Yeah, that's exactly what you have to do right there, though, Sensiball, Kevin, only his second game that he's played all year. Uh, and only two at bats coming in. So he was 0 for 2 coming in. You got to come right at him, especially with their leading hitter, Patrick Mazur, coming up next. Outside ball one. Hard ground ball to Jones at first. Gathers, steps on first, got it. Kind of went off his glove, but he stayed with it. He did stay with it. I was afraid he was going to reach for it with his hand, and then Mazur got good speed getting down the line there. He dove in the head, head first in the first to try to beat it, but good job by Jones of sticking with it and a big second out for Kobe here in the top of the third. Exactly what you want to do after your team just put up another three spot is – Set the other team down in order and not allow them to get any momentum back. You got the first two guys out here in the top of the third. Bo, Co Bo Cooper, he's uh, 0 for 1, ground out to Coy back in the first. One ball, one strike. Fouls that one off. Yeah, Coy made a nice backhand stop on that one. Strong arm threw Cooper out in the top of the first. One ball, two strikes. 
to the junior DH. Swings, it's in the turf. German's got to throw to first. He does, and back-to-back -back strikeouts for the big fella, Kobe Cherry. Trojans lead it here on the home field, 6-1 over Cathedral. We're headed to the bottom of three. Tonight's game being presented by Home Bank. Born and bred, went to Center Grove High School, proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ridley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 365 times, shame on the weatherman. Stop trusting the weatherman and start trusting your instincts. Final of the third inning, inch nine runs here to the Trojan. Leading off number 13, Andrew Rupa. Center Grove Baseball being presented apart tonight by Texas Roadhouse. Warner Eye Care, Duke Holmes, Kopetsky Auto Wash, Abig Injury Law, Reese Restoration, Southwestern Indiana Sports Network, ARS Rescue Rooter, Andy Moore Lawn Care, Top Tier Baseball, Gandalf Financial Services, and Eagle Two Golf Center. Our presenting sponsor tonight is Home Bank, and we are underway here in the bottom of the third. Andrew Krupa grounding out to begin the third for the Trojans. CG leads Cathedral 6-1, to one, and now we'll see the number Nine batter at the plate for the Trojans, Drake McClurg. we got to talk about our main sponsor, Kevin. That's home bank tonight. The legend, legendary center Grove pitcher, Scott Hines. I know we were passing around, you know, pictures of him and, and stories about, you know, what was it, 95, 99, he was on the gun, <laughs> but also with a knuckleball. So tell me what kind of combo, I, you know, I called him a mixture of Nolan Ryan and Phil Necro. Um, Good comparison. Yes, but uh, we appreciate Scott Hines and his crew at Home Bank for being our presenting sponsor today. Scott's a super, super Center Grove guy that uh, has done so much for the football program down at the Bantam Fields and also helping Coach Moore and his staff at the high school level. Appreciate his sponsorship and their sponsorship. We sure do. Thank you, Scott Hines, Greenwood Area President for Home Bank, our presenting sponsor tonight for CG Baseball. Scott always likes to pick out the two big games. So <laughs> it was always Carmel and Cathedral. Yeah. Well, Carmel's no longer on the schedule, yeah. so now it's Cathedral and Franklin. So, but we appreciate his support once again this year for CG Baseball. Scott's always enjoyed the football road trips to various Cathedral home sites, right? That's Kevin? right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Full count here to Drake McClurg. This one stays high. He's aboard with a walk. Third walk issued tonight by Reeves. Good eye there by the freshman who's already committed to play at IU baseball. It's important. I mean, it's almost like having a second leadoff man down there in the number nine hole. McClure comes in batting 412 on the year. That's fantastic. Got a great jump, Kevin. Good arm. He slides in safely. Great speed. Steiner, though, with a good arm, made it interesting. Yeah, but uh, to your point, you know, 99.9% .9 of steals are all on the pitcher. Never, never the catcher's fault, but uh, right there is a case in point. He got a great jump off of Reeves, and Despite Steiner's nice throw to second, McClurg was able to beat that one. Coy has a count of two balls, no strikes. Coy tonight, double, walk, he has scored twice. 
second steal on the year from Drake McClurg. Now Noah's looking for something. Outfield really shadow on center and right. Oh, that's a base hit. Beautiful bunts, single. No, oh. boy. McClurg came around third. Now he's hung up between oh. home and third. Catcher, they're so... And they're going to run him back and tags out McClurg. The catcher does. That allows Noah Coy to get to second base. And so the, the, they faked the throw to first, and that's why McClurg came around third base aggressively, thinking they were going to throw to first. Yeah. He was going to come home, and then obviously there was no throw to first. So he was kind of caught up in no man's land. That's an inexperience at the high school level right there, Kevin, because that's pitcher did it. the only thing that he had. There was no way he was throwing out Noah Coy. And, you're right. Drake got a little bit excited there, thinking I'm going to go all the way home here. And uh, a great fake by Reeves, and he had McClurg sprinting around third base, got it caught in a run down and got him out. So so Noah Coy again at second base. He's got a double and a single tonight, also a walk at the plate. We have Gannon Grant, double RBI, and scored okay. back in the second inning. Sack bump back in the first. No balls, one strike here to Gannon. Outside, one ball, one strike to Gannon Grant. Gannon hit that towering fly ball to left, and the wind just pushed it into right center, and the left fielder and center fielder just could not make the play. Curve ball, strike two. Yeah, nice breaking ball there by Reeves. Still nobody up in that Cathedral bullpen, Kevin. Reeves now. Approaching 70 pitches in less than three innings. We'll see how much longer Fregi, Coach Fregi goes with him. Foul tip caught by the catcher right into Steiner's glove to retire Gannon Grant and the Trojans. Cathedral held the Irish or the uh, Trojans scoreless that inning. Center Grove leads it though, six to one. We're headed to the top of the fourth here at Trojan Field. Tonight's game presented by Home Bank. I've been in Greenwood my entire life. Uh, born and bred, went to Center Grove High School, proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ribley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Inning, Center Grove leads Cathedral 6 1. Trojan 7 hits, 1 air. Woods lead it right there. 1 air for Cathedral. 1 run on the board. The catcher, J.T. Steiner, number 3 batter, senior at the plates. Lifts one up into right field, and A.J. Beggs got a great jump on it. Makes the catch in right center, 1 away. That's exactly right, Kevin. You, you hit the nail on the head there, Beggs. It looked like Steiner might have one for extra bases, but Beggs gets a great jump in right field, and ball hangs up for him a little bit. And a big first out for Kobe Cherry here in the top of the fourth. Strike one to the number four batter. This is Xander Carnahan playing in right field. Junior lined out to Carson Bush at third base back in the second. One ball, one strike. Bush made a nice shoestring grab there on that line drive by Carnahan. This one's low. Two yeah. balls, one strike. All right, Kevin, every time I hear the name Carnahan, what do you think of 
one of the all-time movies, Kevin, Tommy Boy. <laughs> it was Carnahan Auto Parts or something <laughs> like that. I will take your word oh, for it. Oh, my goodness. I've seen the movie. This has been a while. Oh, man. And uh, a <laughs> fat man in a small suit or short suit or whatever. That's that's a fantastic. But when I saw Carnahan, that's 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 what you thought. Yeah, I'm sure poor Xander has probably never heard of that movie or or his dad's told him about it or something like that. He does ground out to Jones at first base, so two gone. At the plate, Eli Bennett Jr. walked and scored the lone run for the Irish back in the second. You know what I'm happy about, Kevin, is my time off. I know you had Rob Thompson helping you a little bit, at least. Center Grove Sports Network is still on the air because I know we were worried about that a little bit <laughs> without having a, a pause button or a mute button or something like that, that that Rob would say something <laughs> that might get you in trouble with uh, FCC or somebody. Fouled away. No, I tuned in a little we, bit. We, we named that the Rick Embry mute button. <laughs> Rick Embry slash Ted Kitchell mute button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it does exist. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Uh oh. Hits it well. Oh, yeah. Does it stay fair? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a home run solo shot. Stays fair. Home run. First mm. hit of the night for Cathedral. That's Eli Bennett with a solo shot. No doubter on that one. As soon as that was hit, you're right. The only thing you were looking at was see if that was fair. And man, Bennett turned on an inside fastball and. First hit of the ball game for Cathedral and Bennett's first home run of the year. Number 18, Landon Hughes. Solo shot. So breaks up the no hitter. Main thing about that is you don't have anybody on in front of him. So just a solo shot from Bennett. Landon Hughes. Langdon? How about Landon? There we go. Landon Hughes, number six batter, sophomore playing in left field, reach on an air. In the second, two balls, no strikes. Yeah, Kobe kind of overthrowing a little bit to this batter after obviously giving up that home run. A little bit of anger out on that mound, and he's thrown three fastballs that haven't been close. That one's low, so he is aboard with a walk. Second walk issue tonight by Kobe Cherry. Like I said, you just got to be – you just move on. I mean, the guy hit – a good pitch. He just turned on it and absolutely crushed it, and it was a no doubter. So you just gotta shake it off, go to the next guy. You can't let that one mistake compound into a couple more runs. Chase Nichols fly out to McClurg in center field in the second. All-speed pitch, ball one. And all these guys in the bottom of the order, Kevin. 250, 208, and 0 for 3 on the year. Grounder up the middle. Coy dies, goes off his glove, goes into center field. McClure going to make the throw to third, and they lost the handle of the baseball, so not able to make the throw. Runners at first and third for the Irish. That would be a single for Nichols. And yeah, Noah made a great effort up the middle to try to flag that down. It glances off his mitt a little bit. Not a very smart base running decision by Cathedral because if McClure fields that cleanly, he's going to have a good opportunity to throw him out at third base. But he fumbles it out in center field and allows Hughes to get to third base. Nichols at first. So first and third now. Two outs for Cathedral. Two out rally for them here in the top of the fourth. Number eight batter. This is Max Finn. Popped up to Carson Bush back in the second. Hit a high pop up in the infield. Ball one to Finn. One run across in this inning for the Irish. 6-2. Trojans by four. Irish looking for more. Runner at third base. And that's Hughes at third. Runner at first takes off for second base. It's high and inside. No throw by Yerman. Good decision. Nichols at second base, so second and third for the Irish. That's a big spot in this game, Kevin. Obviously, Cathedral can scratch out a couple more runs. They're right back in this game. Outside, gets away from Uriman. Here comes the runner, wild pitch, and he scores. Second time they've scored on a wild pitch. And also the runner moves on to third base. 
Man, and Cherry's just, I mean, he's just overthrowing right now. And No activity in the center grove bullpen. Maybe that's where you go out as a catcher and just, hey, take a deep breath, relax. Right. Yerman's done that once this inning after after that walk. But, yeah, maybe, maybe it needs do it to again be, or it might uh, be a coach. Maybe it's a, a Noah Coy from shortstop, senior captain. Number nine, Eli Sotobon. Coach Hatfield just going to let him work through it right now. This is a guy you got to have. I mean, a kid that hasn't had a hit all year, and you know, here comes Coach Hatfield to have that talk. And now we'll see some movement in the center grove bullpen. Max Finn does draw the walk. Third walk by Cherry tonight. Two of those walks here in this inning. All of this with two outs again after he gets a fly ball to right field and then a check swing bouncer to Caden Jones at first base. Eli Bennett's turned this inning around with that towering home run to right field and since then walk, single, walk, wild pitch and Cathedral's cut this lead in half. Coming up on our post-game show, we'll announce the player of the game for Senegro presented by Texas Roadhouse and Kopetsky Auto Wash. Noah Coy at the moment in the running. Looks like He's off to a great start with a single, double, scored twice, a walk. Looking at my stat sheets, I would say Coy's your top candidate at this point. First and third, two gone. A couple of runs in here for the Irish. Stays inside, ball one. Sensible, the number nine batter, struck out back in the third. Yeah, runner and batter taking a long look at Coach Frege at third base. We'll see if he puts the first runner. He's not going. Just can't find the zone. No. Two balls, no strikes. And this is all to the bottom guys in the order, Kevin. Six, seven, eight, nine. There's a good pitch. Two balls, one strike. Cathedral crowd didn't like that one. They Kevin thought it was thought high. It was a little bit high to sense the ball. When you're struggling, though, sometimes they don't give you that yep. high strike. Outside, three and one. Yeah, sense the ball, like I said. 0 for 3 on the year coming into this at bat. And he walks him. Bases are loaded. Four walks for Cherry. Three of those here in this inning. And now you, you walk the bases loaded and you got the best hitter for Cathedral coming up. And Patrick Mazer, 4-12 on the year coming in. He's over two tonight. There's a nice breaking ball. Outside corner, strike one. Good job by Yerman, yeah, blocks it. Great play by Yerman, because that's another ball that gets by him. Cathedral scratches out there. Both of their, well, two of their three runs, Kevin, have been benefit of wild pitches. The other one, obviously, the home run. The 1-1 one -one as the batter backs out. Cherry off the rubber. Now everybody resets. We're ready to go. Hit well, right field, A.J. Beggs comes in and makes the catch. Hit it right at him. Irish, though, come up with a couple of runs. They make it now a 6-3 to three ball game. The Centro Trojans with the lead, headed to the bottom of the fourth. Tonight's game presented by Home Bank. This is CG Baseball. Warner Eye Care, we're about you, the patient. 
We have invested in the latest technology in order to make the eye exam as thorough and hassle-free as possible. Our high-tech equipment assists us in diagnosing issues before they cause significant vision loss. We also offer the latest in lens technology, and our assortment of frames appeals to every style and budget. Let us help get you on a path to better vision today. Call our office at 317-883-0071. Trojans lead Cathedral 6-3 here at Trojan Field. Center Grove trying to get to 12-0 on the season. 8-0 here on the home field. Cathedral trying to get to 500. They stand at 4-5. 3-4 on the road. Irish got a couple there in the fourth. Carson Bush will lead off for the Trojans. Number three batter, single, RBI, and scored in the first. Walked and scored in the second, and wow. Absolutely tattooed it. Line drive caught by the Sega baseman, Max Finn, the senior, showing his ups. Shoo, he got absolutely robbed on that one. I thought that was headed maybe in the right center field gap for extra bases instead, like you said. Max Finn with the leaping grab there at second base. Strike one to A.J. Beggs, number four batter, single and reached on air, scored once. Off-speed pitch, outside corner, strike two. Yeah, one of those things, too, Kevin, we talk about with good pitchers. If you let them off the hook in the first couple innings, sometimes they get stronger, and looks like Reeves is settling in a little bit. Pops this one out of play. Center Grove left the bases loaded in the bottom of the second inning when they had a chance to really break this game wide open. Since then, Reeves has not allowed to run. Steiner was set up on that one. Kevin about a foot and a half outside the plate, hoping to get the call. I think our scoreboard operator thought it was a strike. He put up three strikes up on the board. All right, come on, Scott. You're better than that. He's not listening to you. No, he's not. That's normal. Down the right field line. It's in foul territory up against the foul fence. He makes the catch. Well done by the right fielder, Xander Carnahan, the junior. Man, two two web gems so far by Cathedral. First two outs of this inning and a little pep in the step from that Cathedral. Dugout, you're right. Carnahan. Went right up against that fence, and it kind of juts out there in the right field, Kevin, and he made the nice grab. And first two guys out here for Center Grove in the bottom of the fourth. Momentum all on Cathedral's side right now. I will say you look at the first and second inning offensively, the Trojans, a lot of runs, a lot of hits, but the third inning, just uh, the one hit by Coy, a walk, but uh, they've kind of cooled off. Yeah, and Center Grove also let them off the hook a little bit in that third with that base running mistake where – he would have had first and third, only one out with Gannon Grant up, and he ran into an out there. And Yerman with the 0-2 pitch. Out of play with that one. Foul ball into the bleachers. And you've also allowed Cathedral to go a little bit longer than Reeves. Reeves had 51 pitches through two innings. Last inning he got through that inning with only 15 pitches, and he's under 10 so far in this inning. First two guys out and no ball, two-strike count to Yerman. Line drive up the middle, base hit for the sophomore. Kind of reached out for that one and didn't try to do too much with it. Man, I've just been really impressed with Yerman. I mean, he's a kid that played JV last year as a freshman, Kevin. Never saw any varsity action, and he's come in and not only done a good job behind the plate catching, but just been really solid today. He's two for two with a hit by pitch, and he came in to today batting 355, so that average is approaching 400. Smith will run for Yerman at first base at the plate. Easton Smith fouls off the first pitch. Fielder's choice and a walk. A couple of RBIs for Easton.
Breeze from the stretch, outside low. Quick throw to first base and he's back in safely. He'll stay at first base, that's Smith. Yeah, you know, a great stop, first of all, on the pitch in the in the turf by Steiner, and then he tried to catch Smith off of first base, threw it wide, but a good job of backing up by Carnahan. Actually, that's going to be Brendan Ely at first base, oh, excuse okay. me. But, uh, yeah, he stayed at first. Fly ball, hit high, shallow left center, and the left fielder this time comes across, makes the catch. Almost had a collision with his uh, center fielder. Center fielder, though, did a good job. He got down to avoid the collision. Trojans, they lead at 6-3 after four complete here at Trojan Field. Tonight's game being presented by Home Bank. This is CG Baseball. I've lived in Greenwood my entire life. Um, born and bred, went to Center Grove High School. Proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ridley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Bo Cooper leads it off for the Irish. He's 0 for 2 tonight. One ball, one strike to Cooper. We're in the top of the fifth inning. 6-3, Center Grove leads Cathedral. Grounder up the middle. Coy throws. Oh, wow. Got wow, what a play by the senior Noah Coy. I didn't think there was any chance he would be able to get him, but what a great job of not only – fielding it but obviously getting in position to throw the ball that's why he was able to throw out Cooper at first base is the quick transition from mitt to hand and good strong arm from Coy and a big first out for Kobe Cherry and the Trojans yeah I thought he went I can't even blame the the speed of the catcher on that one Kevin that's a DH I wonder if Bo Cooper also catches for Cathedral another one hopper to Coy at shortstop. Throws a strike to Jones at first base to get Steiner two gone. Now the weird thing is, Kevin, as you look at the, the box score in this lineup, the damage from Cathedral has not been, hey, hey, we just looked at the roster. Guess, guess what else uh, Bo Cooper plays? Catcher and utility. And utility. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to say I called that, but I called it. <laughs> we know Kevin led Franklin Central with 85 steals his senior year or something like that, probably. Did they ever courtesy courtesy run for you, Kevin? Never did. <laughs> Don't recall that ever happening. Once again, grounder, he backhands it at short and throws the first. Put on a clinic, Noah Coy. Wow. That was impressive. All three ground outs going to Noah Coy that inning, and he made every single play. Three up, three down. We're headed to the bottom of five. Six three Trojans over the Irish. Today's game presented by Home Bank. Lived in Greenwood my entire life. Um, born and bred, went to Center Grove High School. Proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home. It's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. 
If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ribley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 365 times, shame on the weatherman. Stop trusting the weatherman and start trusting your instincts. Five pitching change for the Cathedral Fighting Irish. The center fielder Patrick Mazer now comes into pitch. He relieves Jackson Reeves, the senior, and bring him out the numbers on Reeves tonight. Yeah, Reeves uh, got through four innings. Kevin gave up eight hits, six runs. I think five of those were earned. Four walks, only one strikeout. He did hit one guy, so he battles through those four innings because Kevin. Center Grove had him on the ropes in the first couple innings, but he was able to hold them without a run for the last two and keep his team in the ball game. And now Patrick Mazer takes over his first pitching action of the year, Kevin, for Cathedral. Lefty versus lefty. This is Caden Jones, 0 for 2 tonight. Ball one outside to Jones. Ball two. Doesn't look too comfortable no, on the mound. he doesn't. And they, they've got two more guys warming up down in the bullpen, so this – this, this could be a quick outing. It might be just, uh, hey, you're going to face Jones is a lefty, Krupp is a lefty, Coy is a lefty. So three out of the next four guys, lefties. Oh, man, he gets the benefit of a high strike there. Look good in a mitt, but it appeared to come across high. Two balls, one strike. Outside, nope. Two balls, two strikes. Not throw the same pitch. Grounder right back. It's a chopper to the pitcher. Mazer throws on to first to get Jones one away. Good job of coming back after those first two pitches weren't anywhere close, Kevin, but you got the benefit of a couple called strikes on the outside part of the plate. And now Center Grove will pinch hit Reed Sawa for Andrew Krupa. Sawa comes in on the season, batting 200. Two doubles, three RBIs for the sophomore. Oh, and he gets hit. That's reminiscent of his big brother, Kevin, who led Center Grove in the last couple years of getting hit by pitch. So, so Reed Sawa at first base. Second batter tonight, hit by pitch for the Trojans. And now you get another pinch hitter here, Kevin Patrick Smith, batting for McClure. I think this is uh, the chess match that we're seeing. Coach Hatfield sees they got a lefty. We're going to put up some righties at the plate. Yeah, one lefty he will not be pinch hitting for, Kevin, is uh, the next batter, Mr. Coy. That's right. <laughs> he can hit whoever is on that mound. Good lead at first base by Sawa. Patrick Smith on the air, Kevin. Still searching for his first hit, 0 for 5. Has a count of two balls, no strikes. Sawa, he's got good speed at first. Foul tip by Smith, two and one. Trojans back in action Friday at Ron Colley. Looks like first pitch scheduled for seven o'clock, playing under the lights at Ron Colley. For the Irish, they're back in action at home on Friday, 5.30 against Burbuff. And this one's high again, three and one. And Ron Colley, like I said, 6-2 and two on the year. Good start to their season. That will be a good challenge for Center Grove. Our next web stream coming up tomorrow night. Center Grove softball hosting Avon. How's this one off? And then we'll have Center Grove baseball coming up on Monday. Westfield 
hosting the Shamrocks. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Friday night's broadcast as well, Kevin. That should be that should be a blast. We'll get into that as the game goes along. Full count to Smith. There goes the runner. Ball four. He's great. aboard to the walk. Great eye there by Patrick Smith. A slow breaking ball there, and he doesn't chase that one from Mazur. And now two on, one out. Your shortstop, Noah Coy. Two for two tonight, double, single. Score twice, a walk. One away. First baseman really in tight. They're expecting a bunt by Coy, but. First inning down the left field line for a double. Walked in the second. Third was a bunt single. High and tight. One ball, no strikes here to Coy. And coming up this Friday, we will be at the Center Grove High School Bandy Gym for some IU Purdue women's volleyball that, scrimmage. That's going to be awesome. Four to 5,000 fans expected. Pitch is outside. Catcher throws to second. Everybody's back in safely. Two balls, no strikes to Coy. Yeah, but, those, uh, great crowd expected Friday night. Those uh, those two programs, he always plays a, a set of three or four kind of scrimmages or exhibitions in the spring because obviously their season's in the fall just like high school. Two really good programs. Purdue last year made it to the Sweet 16 before they got beat. IU had a really good season, didn't quite make the NCAA tournament, but uh, coach that they've had down there for a couple years has really built that program up as well. So really looking forward to that. I'm pretty sure after, after uh, that broadcast, Kevin, Big Ten Network will probably be calling us and everybody else. It'll get underway at 6.30. All tickets sold out. So if you don't have a ticket, join us on Friday night, 6.30. IU Purdue women's volleyball from the Bandy Gym here at Center Grove High School. Two balls, two strikes here to Coy. Runners at first and second, one away. Mazur looks in for the sign. Shakes off. Now he's ready to go. Sets at the belt. Lifts this one up into left field, left center. Left fielder comes over, makes the catch. Two gone. Runners remain at first and second base. Man, a really good job there. Measure getting a tough out. And Noah Coy. Now it's up to Gannon Grant. Center Grove still hasn't scored since that second inning. Number one, Gannon Grant. Gannon Grant, sack bunt, double, RBI, and a strikeout tonight. Inside, ball one. Come on, G, pick him up. I'd love to see him get into one, Kevin. That center fielder and right fielder are really shallow. You know, line the ball in the right center. He's probably looking at a double or a triple. Inside corner. One and one. Outside, two and one. Center Grove does host Castle this Saturday at Two o'clock. However, we're going to have Center Grove softball doubleheader, the Milligan Classic on Saturday. So we'll have softball. Unfortunately, we will not have the live stream of that Castle game on Saturday. That should be another good one here at Center Grove. Castle comes in eight and two, ranked I think eighth in the state in the 4A poll. I said Center Grove had a good battle with them last year over at Plainfield in the semi-state semifinal game. 3-1 pitch, he rips a line drive foul. Ball up in his eyes there, and that's that's the kind of swing you should take on 3-1. Now he runs the count full, so those runners will be going, Kevin. So anything that gets in a gap, you're going to see Patrick Smith have a good chance to score from first. 
Mazur taking some extra time. 3-2 pitch. There go the runners. All-speed pitch. Got him swinging. Strikes him out. Excellent pitch by Mazur. Trojans strand a couple of runners. Score remains 6-3. We're headed to the six here at Trojan Field between Center Grove and Cathedral. Tonight's game presented by Home Bank. once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 365 times, shame on the weatherman. Stop trusting the weatherman and start trusting your instincts. the six, six three. Center Grove leads Cathedral. Trojans three runs in the first, three in the second. The Irish have held the uh, Trojans down though in the third, fourth, and fifth innings. No runs for the Trojans. One run for the Irish in the second and two in the fourth. Eli Bennett, number two, junior first baseman. A walk and a home run. He scored both runs tonight for the Irish. Hit a solo shot, his last plate appearance to right field. Ball one outside from Kobe Cherry. Yeah, he kind of started that rally in the fourth inning, Kevin, with that mammoth shot to right field. That went off of his foot, foul ball. One won the count. That's something that uh, Bennett's first at bat walked in four pitches. Second at bat got a 1 1 breaking ball that he absolutely turned on. Cool. Hit a high in the air. McClurg calls it out in center field, makes the catch. I think that's Patrick Smith out there, Kevin, after he pinch hit for McClurg. That is Patrick Smith. Good catch. I think I heard Bennett cry out there a little bit after that hit. <laughs> got under it too much. He thinks he just meant, you know. You hit your first home run of the year, and then you got in your mind that I should hit every ball like that. Ball one to Landon Hughes, sophomore. Reached on there and also a walk and scored the third run for the Irish. Crazy thing is, Kevin, this is the part of the lineup that Kobe has struggled with. First four guys, 0 for 12, Kevin. Five through nine, everybody has been on base at least once. Two balls, one strike to Hughes. Outside, three and one. Walked Hughes last time on four pitches. Scored on a wild pitch. Back in the fourth. There's a cut. Good blazing fastball, three yeah. to the count. Hughes way behind on that pitch. Kobe's been clocked at about 93 miles per hour. So he can hit low 90s, and that one's going to be a ground ball, kind of a bouncer, if you will, between first and second base into right field for a single for Hughes. Yeah, I think the only one that had a chance at that was Caden Jones, and he went running back towards first base, thought that Gannon Grant was closer in that hole than what he was, and that ball scoots in the right field on about four hops. And once again, Hughes has been on three times, Kevin. First via an air, then a walk, and now a hit. Good night for the on-base percentage. Chase Nichols, sophomore. Fly out to the center fielder in the second and a single in the fourth. Strike one here to Nichols. This is where he needs to not let that single affect him and just now come straight after these next couple guys. And get out of this inning. Cherry from the stretch. 
Checks the runner back to first. Once again, Eric Hobbig and the uh, Hobbig Injury Law Firm donating $1 tonight for each Cinegrove run scored, each strikeout tonight by the Cinegrove pitching staff, and also $3 for each Cinegrove home run. Hobbig Injury Law, three offices located in Bloomfield, Columbus, and Cinegrove. For information, go online at hobbiginjurylaw.com. No balls, two strikes. Cherry, a couple of strikeouts tonight. Good block by Yerman. Great play by Tristan behind the plate. He's a worker. One ball, two strikes. Line drive, it finds the gap. Right center field. It'll go all the way to the wall. The run will score. He's going to try to stretch it to a triple. Here comes the throw, the tag. He is out. Wow, Not what, even close. What a relay there. Patrick Smith hits Gannon Grant, and Grant with an absolute BB over there to third base, and Carson Bush gets him by a good four steps. But RBI double for Nichols. He gets thrown out trying to stretch that into a triple. Cathedral cuts into that lead once again, and it's the bottom of the order again, Kevin. Nichols now two for three, and the one out that he did get against him was a line drive to center field to Drake McClurg. Nick. Check swing foul ball by Max Finn, number eight batter. But how about Gannon Grant? Yeah, Boy, that, that was a cannon of an arm. That's a huge play as well to cut him down for that second out of the inning. So he gets the RBI. Give him a double, I guess, on that. Yep. Thrown out at third base. One ball, two strikes to Finn. Trying to limit the damage here. One run in for the Irish. Good movement. The Trojan defense was headed to the dugout. They thought that was strike three. <laughs> At least a couple of those infielders on the left side. Outside, full count. Finn tonight is 0 for 1, a fly out. Actually popped up to uh, Bush at third and a walk. And he's high with the fastball. He's on a, with another walk tonight. Five walks by Kobe Cherry. So going back to Eric Hobbig and the Hobbig Injury Law Firm. So Rick, during the basketball season on the made threes, $3 for each made three, $741 donated to the Center Grove High School Athletic Department. You know, picked a good, uh, a good year, Kevin, with both teams getting to the semi-state round and also having some superb shooters that Center Grove did. You know, from the from the girls' side, you had Ava Grant, Adriane, uh, Booker, Bischoff, all those girls, fantastic three-point shooters. And then from the boys' side, you had the most prolific three-point shooter in Center Grove history and Joey Schmitz shooting the three. That's going to be the night for Kobe Cherry. Good effort tonight by Kobe Cherry. Couple of strikeouts, five walks. Gave up four hits. Four runs on the board for the Irish. Two gone. We're in the top of the sixth. Cal Shimbra, lefty, junior, in from the bullpen. Shimbra. Comes in, Kevin. This is only his second appearance. He pitched one inning. Yeah, pitching for the I think he Number pitched. Uh, yeah. I think he pitched that uh, county opening round against Edinburgh. That blowout that Center Grove had. One inning pitched, no hits, no runs, two strikeouts. Faced three batters, so Shimbra gets brought in in a tough spot here. Try to nail down this victory for Kobe Cherry. Kobe at the 89 pitches by my count, Kevin. Just kind of ran out of gas there a little bit in that inning. Like I said, it, it's the bottom of the order that's done the damage for Cathedral. Number five hole hitter, Eli Bennett. One for two, two runs scored. Landon Hughes, a six hole hitter. A single, a walk. Two runs scored. Nichols, two hits. 
two RBIs. And Finn has walked twice in his three plate appearances. Important thing, obviously, for Schember, runner on first base. Bond the order, number nine hole hitter, and since the ball, he got to throw strikes. Yeah, sends the ball, strikeout, walk. Number nine batter. Two gone. Trojan six, Irish four. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Center girl put up six runs in the first couple of innings, three in the first, three yeah, more in the second. They've been shut out ever since. Irish one in the second, two in the fourth, and one in the sixth so far. Runner at first base. Chimber from the stretch. Junior lefty. Good movement on the breaking ball. Comes across high. Ball one. Fly ball, hit it a ton, but got under it. That's Sawa going to be called off by Smith, the center fielder, and he makes the catch to retire the Irish here in the top of the six. A couple of pitches by Shimbra. Gets the fly out. One run in for the Irish in the six. 6-4, six, Trojans by two. Tonight's game being presented by Home Bank. This is Center Grove Trojan Baseball. Carson Bush will lead off of the Trojans. Number three batter followed up by A.J. Beggs and Tristan Yerman in the hole. Bush single, RBI back in the first, scored, walked and scored in the second. Probably hit his best one in the fourth, a line shot that was caught by the second baseman. Ball one here to Carson Bush. Grove needs to try to find a way to get a couple insurance runs on the board here, Kevin. Cathedral has just continued to chip into this lead, and now the lead that once was 6-1 to one after two innings is now down to 6-4, to four, heading into the bottom of the sixth. Bush hits a bouncing ball to the shortstop. The sophomore throws the first, got him. Well done by the young man at shortstop. Yeah, that was a nice play by Sensible. Came in, charged it, backhanded, did a good job of getting transferred to the throwing hand and threw Bush out by a couple steps. A.J. Beggs, senior right fielder, singled and scored back in the first, reached on air in the second, and a fly out to right in the fourth. Ball one to A.J. Beggs. Some group has had opportunities, Kevin. They now stranded four. Eight runners through five innings just haven't been able to get that big hit to bust this one wide open. 2 0 to Beggs. Patrick Mazur came in relief last inning for Jackson Reeves. There's a strike. Here we go. 
Three and one. Mazer when he first started didn't look too comfortable, but a lot more comfortable now on the mound. His first appearance here in 2024. He's inside with that pitch. Loses Beggs, still walk. Beggs on for the third time in the ball game, Kevin. Hit and reached on the Number four, Kristen Yerman, Tristan Yerman, I should say. A single, single, and hit by a pitch. Two for two tonight. Also an RBI. I put him right up there with the running with Coy. Boy, you know, you look at what they've done at the plate and in the field. They both have played really well tonight. Yeah, you're right. They call that one a strike. Inside corner. There oh. goes the runner. Begs. <laughs> No chance, good speed, and the pitch was way outside. Siner tried to yeah. kind of kind of a run and jump throw. Picked a great pitch to run on because that was a pitch well outside the strike zone. Beggs got a good jump, and Steiner didn't have any any possibility. So now another runner in scoring position for Center Grove. We'll see if Yerman can come through. Mazer almost messes up and goes from the wind up there before he wisely stepped off. I think Steiner told him to step off. Step up and, and don't balk. Rips it down the left field line. It's going to be just foul. Oh. Not by a whole lot. Man, just a nice, <laughs> easy swing there by Yerman. And I kept thinking that ball was going to tail even farther. And that didn't miss by probably no more than – you're the eagle eye, Kevin. At least maybe a couple feet maybe. Yeah. Three feet maybe. It was close. Would have easily scored bags from second base. Now he's got Yerman in a one ball, two strike hole. Got hit by the pitch, came inside. Yeah, Runners at first Coach and second. Freezy not happened with that. He thinks he just stuck his stuck his arm out or his shoulder out there, but I mean the ball was inside. Now they're gonna come out and have a talk with the he wants to talk to him right now. And we'll see the courtesy runner, Brendan Ely, at first base to run for Coach run number 13, Yerman. E. Coach Freeja, yeah, uh, to now talk to the umpire. Yeah, he's going to ask him to ask the umpire out in the field. So again, having a conversation about this last pitch. He was hit by the pitch. Infield umpire and the home plate umpire agree that he was hit by the pitch. He deserves first base, and that's where he's going to stay. Yeah, Coach Frigi, I think his his argument was that he leaned into that pitch, and it was over the maybe not the strike zone, but uh, over the plate. Umpires decided differently. Easton Smith, strike one. So now two on and only one out for Center Grove again. Had runners on in every inning, Kevin. Two really nice pitches there. Took a lot off. No balls, two strikes. Courtesy runner at first base. I don't know who that is, but. Ely. Ely's got to be very careful. He about got picked off if the first baseman would have went towards there because he was well off of the first base bag. In the hole, no balls, two strikes. This one's outside, one and two. So Smith, a couple of RBIs tonight. Fielder's choice, walk, fly out to left. Yeah, he's got an opportunity, a big hole between second base and first base with a second baseman kind of holding bags on at second. Just punch it through there with two strikes. Comes inside. He Chops it, and the pitcher fields it, throws on to first, but does his job. He advances the runners to second and third base. Yeah, good job of hopping off that mound by Mazur. Comes in and throws Easton Smith out by a step, and now you got a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. 
Caden Jones. Now batting number 23. Struggled Caden a little bit. Jones. Tonight, hitting a double play, popped up to short and one hopper back to the pitcher. Starts him off with a nice curveball. Strike one. So Jones, one would say he's due. Yeah, Coach Hatfield showing a lot of confidence in him, though, Kevin. Giving him the opportunity here. Out in front. 0 oh and 2 to count. And we'll see if Mazur tries to get him to chase something out of the strike zone, either a breaking ball in the, in the turf. Outside, Steiner with the scoop. Yeah, that's when you trust your senior catcher right there, Kevin. Center Grove, unfortunately, has had a couple wild pitches today that allowed a couple cathedral runs right there. Steiner just scoops that one. Not much effort at all. Mazur with the one-two pitch. Rips it down the right field line, foul. Yeah, he kind of got a hanging breaking ball there. Just barely missed. A couple of RBI single or double there down the right field line. Center Grove barely missed a couple of those this inning. Yerman's barely missed down the left field line. Would have played it a run. The wind and fire on the one two. Hits it a ton. Right center field. Does he have enough? And See ya. it is a three run homer for Jones. Wow. Well, you said he was due. I said Coach Hatfield showing a lot of confidence in the junior first baseman, and he makes a believer out of Coach Hatfield with a three-run bomb right there in the right center field. And, man, he has some major, major power from that left-handed side of the plate, Kevin, and what a big, big three runs for Center Grove here in the bottom of the sixth inning. I believe that's Major's. First hit given up since coming in relief. It's it a three-run three bomb by Jones. And on a one-ball, two-strike count, and you could kind of tell Major's worried a little bit about, you know, one of those breaking balls getting away from his catcher, and he leaves too much of that one in the middle of the plate. He about got beat on the one before that for a single or double down the right field line. That time he left one in the middle of the plate, and Jones made him pay. Second homer of the year for Jones. RBIs 9, 10, and 11 for Caden. So now Jones puts himself in the conversation for center Grove player of the game. Three. Saw wall with a count of three balls, one strike. Yeah, three big RBIs there for Caden. You got Jones, Yerman, and Coy all in the running for our center Grove player of the game tonight. And whoever doesn't win, if you got an argument, Kevin Conrad is who you is who you contact because <laughs> he cost you a nice juicy ribeye steak or fillet at Texas Roadhouse. Buff and shine car wash at Kopetsky also. Yes. Yeah. He cost you a clean car and a good meal. <laughs> Kevin Conrad. <laughs> so Sawa is aboard with a walk. Second walk issued by Mazer. Five walks now by the Cathedral pitching staff. Patrick Smith takes strike two. This one's low, one and two. Great, great stop again by J.T. Steiner. Nine, four Trojans, nine hits for CG. First hit allowed by Mazur since coming in relief. Saw was leaning. He's taken off. It's a slow pitch to the plate. He takes it easily at Sega base. Off-speed pitch, great pitch to steal on. Well, we've seen it a couple times this inning, Kevin. Major really slow to the plate, and he has yet to throw over to first base. Obviously, we talked about this was his first appearance, pitching appearance on the year. You kind of wonder if he doesn't have much confidence in his 
in his move over to first base, and center Grove's taking advantage. 2-2 pitch, strikes out Smith. Trojans, three big ones here in the six. Jones goes downtown, three-run shot. 9-4 Trojans over the Irish. We're headed to the top of the seventh. This is CG Baseball being presented tonight by Home Bank. went to Center Grove High School, proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Ridley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not going to find anybody more local than us. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 365 times, shame on the weatherman. Stop trusting the weatherman and start trusting your instincts. Top of the seventh, Irish with one, two, three at the plate. Patrick Mazur, 0 for 3 tonight. Ball one outside. This is Cal Schimber. Came in relief last inning for Cherry. Yeah, if there's anybody that's happy to see Kobe Cherry out of the, out of the game, it's the first four batters for Cathedral. 0 for 12 against Cherry in the ball game. Fly ball, hit it well. Center field, Smith going back. It's going to bounce over the wall. Ground rule double for Mazur. Case in point right there. Mazur gets one. Like I said, batted, batting 4-12 coming in, and Cherry had his number all night, but Schimber gets one over the out, outer half of the plate, and Mazur lines that one. Ground rule double. Man, that just makes that. That three-run bomb by Caden Jones, even more important, Kevin. You give yourself a little bit of cushion here. Key part for Shimbra is to keep throwing strikes. If they get four or five hits in a row, more than likely you're still ahead in the game, but you can't sprinkle a couple walks in there as well. Number two batter, Bo Cooper. Bo tonight is 0 for 3. A couple of ground outs to Coy and a strikeout. And he absolutely got robbed last inning, Kevin, or uh, two innings ago in the fifth by Noah Coy made that unbelievable play up the middle. Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't worry about that guy at second base. You're gaining Grant. You just got to cover up that hole and get the out. Get out. You also, get out. yeah. Get out. Don't worry about him. Ball also, one, uh, ball one. Here's Schimber, don't worry about the guy out there on second base. He wants to steal third base, then let him. you got to get outs. Two balls, no strikes. There is activity in the center Grove bullpen. They had to go to that bullpen last night. Kevin got a couple really nice performances out of that bullpen. Kyle Boots and Brendan Ely came in for the save. Boots got the win in relief of Vanderloot Garen. Outside, 3-0. From the stretch. Take it on 3 -0. There's a strike, 3-1. and one. Definitely Carter. I hope I'm going to 
Fouls this one away. Just got a piece of it. Full count. Shimba trying to battle back. Yeah, we'll see if he can come all the way back after falling behind. Three balls and no strikes. Fouls that one down the right field line. Yeah, if I'm gaining green, I'm, I'm not jockeying over there at second anymore. Just get over in that hole. Cooper was late on that one. Really hard to see now on the right yeah. side of the field. You can see Kate, Jones yeah. at first and Gannon at second. Beggs and right really shielding the sun. 3-2 payoff pitch, fouled off again, straight back. He's not getting great cuts on those, Kevin. It's almost like he's he's just fouling, a, fouling them off, looking for a pitch to either walk on or something that Schimber makes a mistake on. Two ground outs and a strikeout for Bo Cooper tonight. Three two pitch. Ooh, so close. He's aboard of the walk. Runners at first and second. Yeah, tough one to lay off on, but Cooper ball, does that and ball. walks Cooper. And now you got the three hole hitter, JT Steiner. One home run on the year coming in. Gonna try to find a way to get a ground ball here and pitcher's best friend behind you. Number three batter, J.T. Steiner, catcher. 0 for 3. Don't. He needs to quit worrying about that guy back there. He's spending way too much time worrying about him, and you got a five-run lead. You're just trying to get outs right now. Stays outside, ball one. I'm wondering if this is going to be Shimmer can't can't find a way to get an out here. If this might be his last batter. Good speed, couldn't catch up to the high fastball. One and one. High cheese right there. You're right, Steiner. Behind on that pitch. The 1-1. One, one. Chops it down the third base. Line foul. One and two to count. That one could be a little bit... Uh, more inside the bag there, and Center Grove would have a good opportunity to turn a couple. Let's see if Shimmer can get the ground ball. Two and two. That one way outside and high. <laughs> From the stretch. Found away again. Congratulations to the boys track team, Kevin. Got the big win at County last night. A couple records set from that team. Girls got runner up. White one's first County girls track title in history. They got a really nice team this year. 
Coach Timmons gets his first one, Kevin. Strikeout, big outs. Yeah, There's just, a battle back. Just uh, yeah, a you know, slow off-speed pitch there, and Steiner kind of couldn't quite get any wood on it, and that is. That's a huge first out for Kyle Shimra and the Trojans. Xander Carnahan up now, cleanup hitter. 0 for 3. Runners remain at first and second base, one away. Top is 7. Center Grove leads at 9-4. This is inside, ball one. And this is a big out here as well. You got Eli Bennett up next who has already hit a big fly ball. And now Coach Hatfield coming out to talk to Shimbra. Also last night, big win for the Center Grove girls lacrosse program. Ranked number two in Class 1A. Knocked off the number one team in Class 1A. Park Tudor, 9-8 in sudden death overtime. Yeah, that was a fun one. First, first girls lacrosse that we've done this year. Hoping to do a few more of those. But, yeah, they had an overtime 9-8 victory over number one Park Tudor. Possibility of facing them. They faced them last year in the state championship game, Kevin, and lost. Possibility of facing them again, hopefully deep in the state tournament again. But, yeah, that was a fun game to to watch and, and I'm sure to call as well. Quick visit by Coach Hadfield. What a way. There's a good strike. Good fastball. One and one. Number four batter. Again, 0 for 3 tonight. Carnahan came in batting 292 on the year. Good block by Yerman. 2 and 1. Yeah, it's important to keep those runners where they are because obviously you keep that double play as a possibility. Those runners on first and second if you can just get a ground ball here from Carnahan. Low once again, three and one. So here's the question, Kevin, if he does walk him you got a lefty up next. Lefty on the mound. Do you keep Shimmer in or do you go to your bullpen? Great question. Fouled away. I hope we don't have to answer that, that he walks. That's right. Because I think he'll keep him in there to try to finish the game if he is able to find a way to get Carnahan here. Or better yet, let's get a little 6-4-3 action, Kevin, and Go home happy. 3-2 payoff pitch from... Yep. Yeah. Got it. Got the strikeout. Cal Shimbra gets the strikeout. Two gone. Carnahan was fooled on that one. I don't know if he was looking for a breaking ball or you could tell he kind of one of those. He was just hoping that he wasn't called out on that one. But Shimbra paints that outside corner. A good job by Yerman of framing that one. And... Back-to-back -back strikeouts by Shimber, and he's one out away now from getting his first varsity save. Eli Bennett. A walk, a home run, fly out. Here's a ground ball to Gannon Grant. Throws on to Coy at second base, and the game is over. Trojans win it. 9-4, your final. Trojans. 12-0 on the season. The Irish fall to 4-6. Cal Schimber closes the door here on the Irish in the top of the seventh. Nine runs, nine hits, one error for the Trojans. Four runs, five hits, one error for the Irish. And it's going to go back at it Friday at Roncalli, 7 o'clock first pitch for Cathedral, the host for Buff on Friday at 5.30. Home game. Our next web stream coming up tomorrow night. Center goes softball at 6 o'clock against Avon. Our next baseball web stream won't be until Monday, home against Westfield at 6 o'clock. And, Rick, 
How about our player of the game tonight? We, we kind of think we're going to go with Noah Coy tonight. Yep, that's what we got to go to. And it, it's not only from the fact he was on two for three with a walk, so on three out of the four times, but but equally it was important. It was those big plays that he made, Kevin, that one inning, especially all three outs were his way, and one of them was a fantastic play up the middle, just a true web gym there. Uh, great job by the senior Noah Coy, and he'll have a clean car, Kevin, and a nice meal for two at Texas Roadhouse. Sounds great. We'll be back to wrap it up from Trojan Field, 9-4 the final. Trojans over the Irish. Tonight's game presented by Home Bank. This is CG Baseball. Some people spend all day washing and buffing their ride to shiny perfection by hand. But you, you've learned the fine art of delegation. Center Grove High School, proud graduate, go Trojans. I enjoy this community. It, it's my home, it's growing, it has lots to offer, and I'm excited to be a part of it. At Greenwood, we are a full service bank. We can handle your needs from simple personal accounts, savings accounts for your family, auto loans. If you need to have a mortgage, we can meet that need. Emily Wrigley has been in our office for years and knows the area. Scott Hines is Center Grove. He has lived here his entire life and is fabulous. You're not gonna find anybody more local than us. Great win tonight for the Center Grove Trojans. Never easy to knock off the Cathedral Fighting Irish, your final score, 9-4. Ricky brought it up early on in tonight's web stream. Last year, the Trojans were 11-0, went to Cathedral, and lost 7-1. They snapped their 11-game winning streak. That was possible here tonight, but the Trojans get it done. Center Grove now 12-0 on the season. Again, with the win tonight over the Irish, 9-4, your final. And we got to add up our Eric Hobbick numbers. Again, he's donating $1 to the Center Grove High School Athletic Department for each run scored by the Trojans, each strikeout by the Center Grove pitching staff, and $3 for a home run. I think we've got a little bit of all that tonight. Rick yeah, Embry. exactly, Kevin. we got uh, nine runs, one homer from Caden Jones, and then four strikeouts. So 16 bucks from Eric Hobbick and Hobbick Injury Law. Going to the Center Grove Athletic Department, and man, that Caden Jones homer was worth worth six bucks right there. So uh, appreciate Eric Hobbig and, and his team at Hobbig Injury Law for that donation. But yeah, a good job. Center Grove jumped on Cathedral early, Kevin, with that six six one lead in the first two innings, and then got that big three run homer from Caden Jones in the in the sixth to give it a little bit of uh, breathing room. Good job by Kobe Cherry. He gets the win again. Five and two thirds innings pitched. He gave up four runs. Three of those earned. Uh, wild again a little bit, five walks, two strikeouts. But then how about Kyle Schember comes in in the bottom of the sixth inning, gets the, or top of the sixth, gets the last out, and uh, and then shuts the door in the seventh. So his first varsity save from the junior, Kyle Schember, and, and Center Grove stays unbeaten at 12-0. and Center Grove now will get ready for Ron Colley on Friday night on the road, 7 o'clock, first pitch, and then back home Saturday. Castle, like you said, a highly ranked team, in the top ten, a uh, new opponent that will be here uh, at Trojan Field on Saturday at 2 o'clock. Unfortunately, we will not be here for the live stream on Saturday. We have a Center Grove softball doubleheader coming up on Saturday. So we'll have Center Grove softball, or I should say baseball, coming up on Monday, 6 o'clock first pitch against the Westfield Shamrocks, always a quality opponent. So 
Rick, you, you talk about uh, the meat of your schedule. Cathedral tonight, you had BNL last night on the road, and now you look forward to Ron Colley and, like I said, Castle and, and Westfield. So, and then so New Albany, you know, yeah. New Albany is also a team that's been getting votes for you know to be ranked. And so, yeah, it, it's going to be some tough, tough teams coming up here for CG. Yeah, it's a good stretch, though. It, it's obviously a stretch. I loved Coach Hatfield's comments after the BNL game as we want to face those better pitchers because that's who we're going to face in the postseason. So we want to get uh, face those guys and see how we do, and also we want to make sure our pitchers are ready to go come postseason time. So a good one little five-game stretch here for Center Grove over the next seven or eight days, and they were up to the task for the first of, of those five games tonight. So once again, our player of the game tonight is Noah Coy. He'll get a – uh, free car wash, compliments of Kopetsky Auto Wash, and also a dinner for two at Texas Roadhouse. So great job by Noah Coy and a great team win tonight for the Center Grove Trojans. Rick, uh, appreciate your work tonight. I think you and I will be back uh, coming up on Monday. And yeah. then we've got volleyball yep. on Friday. Yep, we've got uh, volleyball on Friday. And then, uh, yeah, you got softball on Saturday. And then we'll be back here at the baseball field. But, uh, yeah, invite everybody to tune into that. Uh, Purdue versus IU volleyball match should be a blast in Vandy Gym with a sold-out place on Friday night. Yeah, it's going to start at 6.30. So until tomorrow night, we'll have softball at 6 o'clock. CG hosting Avon. Final score tonight from Trojan Field. The Trojans get it done over the Cathedral Fighting Irish 9-4. Center Grove still perfect on the season, 12-0, number one in the state in Class 4A. For the Irish, they fall to 5-5. Five and five. Tonight's Center Grove baseball coverage was produced by Center Grove Sports Network. Our presenting sponsor was Home Bank. Our next Center Grove web stream again tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, softball at home against Avon. Trojans back in action, baseball side of things, Friday night at Ron Colley, 7 o'clock. Until next time, this is Kevin Conrad for Rick Embry saying good night, everyone, from Trojan Field.